zone certain areas. I think, I think what so I hear you going saying going forward, you can move into that kind of vision. I think what I, I think I hear you saying is, is that some sense of structure to our neighborhoods, either in terms of uses or activities, that make them more sort of cohesive or other things like that. So that it's sort of instead of being sprawled, they're more neighborhood oriented. Is that is that fair? because I, I gave Bob and Helen kind of a, an assignment, a little homework assignment, which was to take a map of Bristol and start to draw what we thought sort of the natural affinities were. And I had drawn my map and they had drawn theirs, and there's a fair amount of similarity between them in terms of the way that the city seems to naturally affiliate itself. And I think these are the building blocks for some of the things we are just talking about here in terms of neighborhoods and, and orientation. And <laughs> no, no, and, and of course, what was on there is a defined place. So the question ends up being, how how does this work? Okay. Other thoughts in terms of community structure? When I put my points in that box, I was thinking of the structures for the community. It might be because we were talking so much about Memorial Boulevard and the Depot Square, but I, I was thinking in terms of structures where the community can gather and for various activities. Like but Piazza? I think the Piazza, is that what we were thinking? Right. I think the, uh, the, the concept of structure, um, I think, has a lot of different meanings, just like community character. So I think the communities that are the most successful, that people are the most comfortable in, the ones that they appreciate the most, are, are places that have what we call a sense of place. And pe places have a sense of place when there's either an organization or a structure that makes you, or a de development pattern that makes you feel comfortable, makes you feel like you belong in this place, or that's a very attractive place. And places which are sort of sprawl and strip-like are not the types of places that sort of have the sense of place. So I think the whole idea here can be that with the types of structures that we have in the community, and with the way we organize the community, can create the sense of structure. That Bristol's, how many square miles in Bristol? About 26. So 26 square miles is probably about 20,000 acres of property, okay? That's kind of hard to wrap your head around as to exactly how big that is. But if we start breaking it down into manageable bits and pieces and organize our community, it actually starts to make more sense to us and to others, and that starts to pay off in a lot of other ways. Other thoughts in terms of structure? Are you going to present the census? data information that you have showing the differences of the demogra demographic shifts? Yeah. Tonight, no, in the plan, yeah. Uh, tonight's uh, meeting is just about... None of it's online or anything? Not yet, no. no we're just... The agreement was signed to Thursday. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're just getting started. Is this whole plan sort of like an overview of if, God forbid, something happens to Bristol, a large event, and they're sort of setting the sights on how to rebuild or what we have now, sort of a little bit of incremental changes. It's just kind of odd and curious the whole sort of... Whole yeah, that, I mean, this is not like a, uh, you know, if we get hit by a meteorite and we're going to rebuild, we're going to start differently. We're, we're going to build on the community that we have today and try to figure out how to make this community better. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking of maybe not a meteorite, but some man-made event that perhaps, I don't know. No, anyway. I understand. No, I think that we're, we're looking, uh, Bristol's been here for many years, and right. really for people in the room tonight who've lived here your whole lives, or for a long period of time, you've watched Bristol evolve, and it's going to continue to evolve in the future. We can, we can change how our community evolves. How should we do that? Okay. So, for example, downtown, Route 6, neighborhoods, what can, parks, recreation, what can we do to enhance our quality of life, increase the number of crowds, reduce the number of sorries, 
enhance our quality of life and make Bristol a better place. I mean, I think that's it's kind of a, a sense of the plan. Um, I am going to throw open the entire rest of the list here in terms of uh, thoughts or issues that people may have come to talk about or things that you think are important or that <laughs> anything else um, on that list. What other issues do people want to talk about that they think are important for the plan? What brought you here tonight? Well, housing diversity, I would talk about. So that you can maintain a community that has everything. And by everything and everyone, I mean uh, the seniors to the, the middle class to the young, young people. When you start getting to the tipping point, for instance, in a community, say, like, well, I hate to keep referring to West Hartford, but West Hartford, where people go there, educate their kids, and leave, then all of a sudden, you know, the tax burden is going to increase dramatically because of almost every single town in the state has unfunded pensions that are huge, on top of the state unfunded pensions that are huge. I mean, we're going to be looking at some horrific burdens, so we need to keep everybody here. And we don't make the mistakes of closing schools, tearing schools down, because generations are going to come and they're going to go. Just because this year or next year the census of kids says they're right enough for Smith School, well, you save it, you know? We, so we've seen that happen in, in, in many communities. You know, they knock these schools down, they sell them, they turn them into condo complex, and guess what? Five years later, they need to build a school. And building a school now is multi-million dollar investment, and it's on the back of the taxpayer. Speaking of unfunded pensions, there are corporations and businesses that get huge, and I mean, in perpetuity, such as ESPN that Governor Rowland gave huge tax breaks. And, you know, I'm just thinking if taxes sort of were sort of more distributed towards the uh, corporations, but then the individuals would perhaps not have to worry so much about that. My business. suggestion to that is to build that development over it. Call it Depot Square. And that, that, will, money? that will come back. That will come yeah. back to you. Yeah, no. These are things which are outside the control of okay. municipality. So I think this is change the federal tax code. I think they should give California back to the tax code. But honestly, we can't deal with that. Sound that. money. So sound money. I understand, but let's. <laughs> what can Bristol do to make its community better? So the issue, there's a, there's issues that are outside of our control. So let's try to try to deal with what we can. Other topics or issues that you think are important? I was, um, actually I came here tonight, I wanted to ask you about the plan. It has to be drafted in accordance to smart growth principles. How, how does that relate to Bristol the way it is right now? Does that concentrate development in certain areas or does that dictate conservation in certain areas? Now I think that the state, um, uh, what we're talking about here is the uh, state statutes the Planning Commission under Connecticut state law is required to update its plan once every 10 years. Um, since the Bristol plan is a 2000 plan, that this new provision is going into effect. So we have to be adopted by July 1 of 2015. That's the first rule that we're working under. And the second one is that this, the plan has to consider the state smart growth principles. And those smart growth principles are actually beneficial and helpful to Bristol. Because what they talked about is trying to focus and concentrate development in built-up communities. So Bristol, in terms of promoting new economic development, is a place that the state would want to try to encourage these types of things to happen. We have water sewer infrastructure, so we, we uh, will uh, compete very well in terms of the availability or the ability to support growth. Um, the open spaces that we have, the, uh, the highlands, if you will, in the northwest and southwest corners of town um, are environmentally sensitive areas or more environmentally sensitive where we can uh, be careful about protecting resources in those areas. So I think the state plan is going to reinforce the patterns that we have in the city today and set the stage for future growth. It's not going to be a threat to us or it's not even going to, it's not, gonna, it's not like winning the lottery or anything else like that. But with economic development, is it, it dictates where economic development has to be concentrated? No. And the state plan doesn't get that specific. In other words, it really deals with the state as a palette or a mosaic of 169 municipalities. Bristol gets to decide within its boundaries what it wants to do, but we're also going to be constrained by the existing land use pattern and zoning pattern in the community today. 
So we're not likely to tear down residential neighborhoods and put in an industrial park. We're not likely to tear down an industrial park and put in residential neighborhoods. So we're going to work within the fabric that we've got, but that is also the type of thing that the state plan encourages. But the, I see, I saw in the documents from um, the state plan, it says um, for concentrating development along transit corridors. Does, does that apply to um, roadways, or is that specifically to well, transit? Well, I mean, roadway like can be a transit corridor. But I think the issue here is that if the busway service is going to go to New Britain and then go elsewhere, there is currently a study underway in terms of the rail line between Berlin, Hartford, Berlin, and Waterbury, which comes through Bristol, in terms of the potential for that. So should that be another state investment at some point in time in the future? That could pay dividends for us because to take a train, you could ride a train for a half an hour and be in Hartford and say to yourself, well, I'm not going to fight traffic on 84 or through the bends and, and et cetera. 57. So, so that's a situation, again, where Bristol could benefit from these types of things. So smart growth changes uh, our focus in terms of some of the issues that we're going to be doing. Um, but it's more about making communities more livable, about strengthening neighborhoods and, and other things like that. So I, I think it's an opportunity for Bristol. It's not, if, I was, if you were a rural community out in the sticks away from stuff and you wanted economic growth, I would say the state plan is probably not going to help you very much. Right. Because the state plan is going to want to focus growth in places with infrastructure and capacity. And I think Bristol has that. Thank you. We are going to beat 8.30, I think. Guys, here's the situation. Let me just talk a little bit about where we go from here. The next steps in the planning process, again, we're going to be done by July of 2015. So we really had just gotten started. I had explained to the Planning Commission that this meeting was one of the first things I wanted to do because I wanted to hear from the community about the issues that they thought were important. So we're going to digest the results of tonight's meeting, the things that we talked about. I'll be doing independent research and interviews to learn more, analyzing the census data and other things like that. We're going to review and revise the PUC chapters that we currently have and get to a draft plan, go through a community review process so that people can see and understand the changes between 2000 and today, revise the plan and adopt it, again, being done within a year. So that's our process. I encourage you to stay focused and involved. If there's things that you think about, what drives me nuts is that when I leave a meeting on the ride home, I say, gosh, I wish I had said. Bob and Alan have set up, is it, is it active now on the city's webpage? In, in planning and, how do, how do you get to it? Is it right off the front page or? It's, uh, if you just, if you Google 2015 Plan of Conservation Development in Bristol, it will come up. Uh, there is also an um, email address yep. there. So it's just about the That set. email will come to the planning office, uh, and then we'll forward that email over to Glenn. And, and feel free to share that information with other people. So there's an opportunity for you to submit thoughts or comments as we go along on the process. Information that we prepare as part of this process will be put up on the city website, so you will be able to review it and again, uh, be able to participate in the process as we go. But the email address is 2015 PLCD at BristolCD.gov. There you go. Everybody catch that? So thank you everybody for coming here tonight. And if there's other thoughts or things that you think about you'd like to share with us, we would love to hear those. So thank you so much. Thank you.